Hi! In this video I will tell you how I created this scene with the great Blender Guru. So, it all started when I completed this animation. Character Creator program gives a good result for sure, but the generated CG humans are no match for MetaHuman. Just look at that one. It's currently the best solution for creating people available to anyone. Almost anyone. You see, that's the problem. To use MetaHuman you need to know Unreal Engine. And I'm not ready to learn it yet, uh, maybe someday. So, what can I do to improve the quality of characters from Character Creator or any other human creation software? I found a solution among my own videos. Not so long ago I posted a deepfake of myself in the Keanu Reeves body. When I remembered that video, I immediately thought about what if I could combine a 3D model of a person with deepfake? Would that mean I could make even more realistic CGI people than in MetaHumans? What if I could make them even better than Luke in Mandalorian? Does that mean that I alone can make a CGI person way cooler than Disney? Does this video even need subtitles or I can be understood without them? So many questions, but let's just get started. For my experiment I want to use the best friend of any beginner in Blender, the king of CG Donuts, Andrew Price. So step 1. We need a 3D model of a person that we can import into Blender. Besides character creators, there are other solutions such as Dust3D, MakeHuman and uh, so on. For those who don't want to learn new programs, there's a separate add-on for Blender to create people called Human Generator. So, you have decided on your program and the face you want to transfer later. Next, you have to create the face shape you need. To make a good deepfake it's not enough to use someone's head. You've probably seen a lot of examples of deepfake on the web. There are good ones and bad ones. But most are missing one crucial element. A matching head. That's why it can often feel like you are looking at a glued face. And that's the beauty of using a CGI character. You can get, if not perfect, then definitely better results in deepfake. In my case I need a head shape that look like Andrew Price's head. And the finishing touch… beautiful. Step 2. Import your character into Blender and animate it. I exported my model to FBX and ta-da! Now it's in Blender. Now our task is to add life to our character. Select Armature, go to Pose mode, switch to Automatic Keyframes. Now we can rotate a bit the bones we want to make it look like he's slowly looking around and at the end he's looking at the camera. Character Creator gives us a bunch of different blend shapes. These are the parameters that are used to animate faces. Among them I need a blink animation. Let's put the mouse pointer on the parameter we want, press I, one keyframe is set, move forward a bit, now we drop this parameter to zero, the character closes his eyes. A little more forward, copy the first keyframe and past. Beautiful. Next we need hair and beard. But I must warn you I'm no expert in creating hair in Blender. Because I was hoping to get hair like this, and I ended up with this. So you can safely skip this part. For this scene I don't need the background, so go into Render Settings, uh, Film and turn on Transparent. We can now render the animation, but before that I want to set up Blender so it will render the character and his hair separately. To do this we duplicate our character call it hair, 
put it into separate collection, call it hair collection and create a new view layer. Let's call the first one the character layer and the second one the hair layer. Select hair, in the particle system open render panel and unchecked show emitter. Do the same in the viewport panel. In the character layer choose the hair collection, go to the collection properties panel and check indirect only. Now in this layer we'll have only the character on a transparent background and his hair shadow. Let's go to the hair layer. Do the same but with the character collection. Check the indirect only. In this layer we will only have hair on a transparent background. You can now click on render animation. The third step is to prepare the materials for deepfake. For a good result I need as many examples of Andrew's face with different emotions and lighting conditions as possible. In this case I can mostly use only videos from Andrew's podcast, even not all of them. First because some videos have his face obscured by the damn microphone. Second, many of the videos are similar in lighting. And third, I can't take his old videos because he looks a bit different from his current self there. If I use them, Deepfake will probably try to give me the average of those results. And it usually doesn't look good. Anyway, I picked three videos with different lighting. In Premiere Pro I extracted a bunch of clips, I speeded them up and exported them to a JPEG sequence and ended up with 1797 frames. With Andrew's face done, let's move on to the rendered animation from Blender. I now have two sequences, one with the character and one with the hair and beard. For deepfake I just use the character without hair. So materials are prepared and let's move on to step 4, setting up Deepfake. For this task I use the program called Deepface Lab. The download link is in the description below. All sequences with CGI character put in data destination folder and selected frames with Andrew in data source. Run operation number 4, data source face set extract. At the beginning we are asked to select the GPU. Write 0 or 1 if you also have two cards and if you have one just write 0. Press enter. Next choose which fragment of the face we need. Face, whole face or head. I choose whole face. In here type 0, 512, 100, yes or no, uh, no. So now Deface Lab will convert Andrew's sequence but the result will contain only his face. Now we need to do the same thing but with the CGI character. Run number 5. Data destination face set extract. The process is the same, even shorter. And we end up with this set of images. Now the most important thing. Number 6. Train SAE HD. At the beginning we are asked to create a model. Just think of a name and type it in. For me it will be an AQ face model. Next you have to select the GPU again. In here type 0, no, 0. Flip source face randomly. So I write no because I have both left and right sides of Andrew's face. If you have mostly one side or no second side at all then write yes. If you wrote no in the previous line, then here you write yes and vice versa. Batch size. Now this is an important point. The higher number you put, the better defect will generate your face. But this number will depend on your GPU. The minimum recommended setting is 4. I will set it to 8. Here we set the resolution of generated defect. Also very depends on your GPU. I will put 352 and you need to experiment. Just set the desired resolution and uh, if you get an error start over and set a smaller one. In here type whole face DFUD 256, 64, 64, 22, yes, yes, no. 
place models and optimizer on GPU. So this thing can speed up the process of phase generation by several times. But again, it will all depend on your GPU. If you get an error the first time, then try to reduce batch size or resolution. This parameter also depends on your GPU, but you can work without it, no big deal. Here at the beginning right now, and when you get about 80,000 iterations, then enable it. Here, on the contrary, you start with yes, when you reach about 50,000 iterations, change it to no. This is recommended to turn on at the end, but again it will depend on your GPU, it will add sharpness to the face. When you reach 100,000 iterations, try at least 0.1. In here type 000, none, yes. Yeah, this is the last point, write yes if you have never generated a face before. Deface lab will then start practicing on other faces. Train it to maybe 50,000 and then turn it off next time. Press enter and say goodbye to your computer for a few days. But if at any point you decide to pause, press enter in the face window to finish and save your progress. So after 2-3 days I was able to get about 143,000 iterations. Not bad. Usually it's recommended more, but I got tired of waiting. Let's move on to the final step. Step 5. Compositing. You have two options. To combine the face with the CGI head using the built-in Deface Lab Composer or a familiar program such as After Effects. I chose the second one because there are more settings there. But we will need Deface Lab Compositing tool for a bit. Turn on operation number 7, Merge SAE HD. Choose the created model, then the GPU. Hit enter, enter. You will see a new window with hotkeys. Everything is straightforward here. And before I load all into After Effects, I want to give myself more space to work with. And to do that, I need to enlarge the face mask. Press S. The command line displays how much the mask has increased. Mm, this will be enough. Now I press Shift plus period and Deface Lab will enlarge the mask for the rest of the frames. Beautiful. Let's export the resulting face with operation 8. Merge to MOV lossless. Start After Effects and import all materials here. The CG render and the resulting face. Deep Face Lab automatically slaps the generated face on top of the source and exports you the alpha channel so you can cut the face. You can use it, but I prefer to use After Effects mask because I can adjust them how I want. So after you drew the mask, you get something like this. Let's put our CGI character layer underneath and the layer with the hair will be on top. Well, I got lucky. We don't need the CG beard. We can hide it with the mask. Now I'll use Lumetri color and try to merge the head with the face. Some of the parameters have to be animated, because in the source, as you have noticed, the lighting changes a bit. I did what I could by color correcting his skin, now let's make some adjustments to the lighting. And here's my advice. If you don't have a lot of source material for deepfake, where the face is differently lit, don't set the light for your CGI character so that half of his face is hidden behind the shadow. It is better to choose a safe path and light his whole face evenly. Because otherwise you also have to create an artificial shadow, like I did. And that's always bad for realism, and it just can be nerve-wracking. So I had to draw the shadow on his face with the mask and animate it. All that's left is to add some finishing touches. On the layer with the face, add unsharp mask. I set the amount to 32, radius 3 and also add Sharpen 10. Here's before and here's after. I created an adjustment layer on top and again with Lumetri color I color grade all layers together. 
and in the end add grain effect. That's it. Actually, I'm very happy with the result. Of course, it's not perfect, but I think this technique is good enough to use in the future. So subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss my next projects, tutorials and other experiments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and write down what do you think about this new tutorial format and what else would you like to hear from me.